Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatory. So let's talk a little bit about archery tests versus armour. So uh, because I'm mostly known for uh, European warfare, obviously I've stuck on a 15th century style brigandine, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a second. And um, I've got a war bow, a light war bow um, by um, Will, Will Sherman. And um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about um, arrow tests or penetration tests against different types of armour. Now what inspired this video is I was contacted by Blake Cole um, of the Way of Archery channel, a link below, and uh, Justin Ma and Blake Cole have done a really really cool video which um, that's the link I've put below and I really recommend you go and watch that. It's about half an hour long and uh, it's a very um, methodical and scientifically conducted test on some lamellar armour. So we're very used to seeing uh, medieval uh, longbows um, being used against medieval armour, um, but what we're not so used to is seeing Asian style bows and Asian style arrows and Asian style armour. Um, and it's well worth watching that test, but it did, for me, and this is not a criticism, but it did highlight that there's fundamentally three elements uh, in these tests, and very often, where the tests fall down is in one of those, or sometimes even more of those elements, um, being not even perfect, but just there being something obviously deficient uh, in the test. Now, before I go into that, I've spoken about this topic many times before, and I've pointed out that one of the problems with these testing, um, with these tests, is that people often come into it trying to prove that armour is unbeatable or trying to prove that bows shoot through everything and that armour doesn't work. Um, and so there's usually a heavy bias involved. I myself don't have a heavy bias. I love armour. I love bows. Um, and I try to have a holistic view of, um, of these weapon systems used in context, used in period. I got the word in quickly there. Um, and obviously, you know, archery was incredibly effective all over the world for thousands of years uh, because it was used and developed and invested in. Um, and equally, armour clearly worked very, very well because, again, it was used for... Um, yeah, just about thousands of years. Yeah, it was thousands of years um, uh, over, you know, the whole world, at least and everywhere that where they could physically make armour. Um, and uh, and again, a huge amount invested into it. So clearly armour works and bows work. The question is, how do those two things interact in different contexts? And we must remember that uh, in some contexts, it might be that certain armour was quite, um, you know, quite deficient compared to the archery of that area and that that time. And in other situations, it might be that uh, in uh, the archery wasn't very effective because the armour was so good. Um, and you know, there's one obvious example is in medieval Europe where we see the armour ramping up and ramping up but we also see the missile weapons ramping up and ramping up so we see you know the English war bow is most famous the the longbow um, getting more and more sort of bigger and powerful probably um, but equally uh, crossbows and of course ultimately firearms as well guns so the test conducted on way of archery to me uh, is really really great because first of all they've they've given all the uh, weights and measures, they've measured the arrow speed uh, and they, the arrow weights and they know the poundage of the bows and there's lots of known quantities. Um, but they've also come at it from a particularly unbiased point of view and that is something honestly which is becoming less rare to find but used to be very very difficult to find so uh, most of these tests in the early days at least as far as my um, experience was was were done for TV uh, documentaries and um, you know people like Mike Lodes were involved with ones years ago and this kind of stuff and very often and I know from working with TV documentaries myself, um, TV people often have an agenda and they want, they decide a story and they want to, they want everything that happens, all the tests that happen to support their story. And very often these were documentaries about things like the Battle of Agincourt. In fact, Agincourt has been done to death. Uh, let's look at some other battles, maybe Poitiers or Vernoy. Um, but uh, very often they were trying to show the awesomeness of the uh, English war bow and how effective it was against um, armour. Um, uh, and and that somehow uh, you know armor couldn't stand up to the power of the English longbow, which of course is is rubbish. Um, but um, 
what they were trying to do is they had a very biased stance point. Whereas what's happening more now is that lots of people with resources, um, not so much me, but other people on, on, uh, on the internet, like the, um, the Way of Archery channel guys, um, Justin and Blake, they come at it with a more unbiased point of view and they've actually for the most part gone out and got better armor and better bows and better arrows than were actually used on those old TV documentaries from 20 or 30 years ago. So uh, absolute kudos to them um, that they have uh, come at it from an unbiased point of view and I have to say I don't want to spoiler their video so watch their video but the armor does very well, despite the fact that they are archers. They are not archers setting out to prove that archery trumps all other things. They are archers who actually came out with a result that isn't necessarily the result that you would have expected from people who are, at least as far as their channel is concerned, primarily archers. So, um, it's a great video. I love the fact they use lots of science. I love the fact they pointed out the video to me. Thanks guys for letting me know about it and um, because I don't have unlimited time to trawl the internet for all of these tests but this was a really worthwhile, it was worthwhile half an hour of my time to watch this. Um, but it did highlight for me that there are three things involved apart from the human, let's take the human out of the equation now, but there are three material things involved in these archery versus armour tests. Okay, first of all there is the bow, Secondly, there is the arrow, and thirdly, there is the armour. Now, from my point of view, the least important in this equation is actually the bow. And it's funny because usually in these tests, the bow gets a huge amount of attention. But actually, all that really matters is the velocity and the mass of the arrow. Okay, it doesn't actually really matter what's shooting it. It could be shot out of a, an air cannon, it could be shot out of a sling, it could be shot from a ballista, it could be shot from a crossbow. Um, all that really matters is the, um, in terms of the, the missile, once it's left the bow, the bow becomes irrelevant, okay? And what we're really concerned about in these tests is the moment of impact, yeah? So what happens at the moment of impact? Well, at the moment of impact, the bow is playing no part in the equation. The only things that are uh, playing a part in the equation, once, once you've drawn and released this thing, are the arrow and the armor okay so the bow is no longer a factor so actually the draw weight of the bow the style of the bow all of these things are more or less irrelevant because those are only relevant to putting the arrow into the air and giving us a resulting um, speed or velocity versus mass now there is uh, once we've got the arrow so it's important to say that the arrow is far far more important than just the product of mass and velocity so a lot of people who I mean I did physics uh, I did physics until I was 18 at school actually um, but a lot of people with a basic level of understanding of physics boil it down to this is a mass with a velocity um, and so it has a joules of energy Unfortunately, that is extremely short-sighted because what happens when a uh, projectile or an object of any sort hits another object depends on a whole range of factors including how long this object is, what shape this object is, um, how easily diverted this object is, what the, uh, how squishable, how squishy the end is, how compressible the end is, what the end's made of, the shape of the end, the cross-sectional shape if it's going to penetrate so many factors um, and you know for example if we shoot a, um, a stone out of a slingshot um, you know like a, a, an elastic powered slingshot and if we shoot a lead bullet a uh, lead pellet out of a slingshot if the stone and the lead pellet have the same mass they um, uh, and uh, let's say they have the same mass and the same velocity um, when they hit the target they will not do the same thing because they don't react in the same way the stone and the bullet are different shapes and also the lead will squash um, and the stone will po possibly shatter um, there are there are so many so many variables okay so the arrow itself is incredibly important. Now, um, one point at which I felt that the, the Way of Archery channel's um, test fell down was on the arrows. I thought that obviously they were using top quality armor. Um, they were using 
a top quality bow of a you know a suitable draw weight to give the sort of velocities that we we would expect but the arrows weren't suitable to the test in a couple of points um, the wooden arrows in their shafts and fletchings were pretty good the aluminium arrows i feel were completely irrelevant to this test okay um, because on the moment of impact aluminium arrows do not behave the same as wooden arrows okay due to being made of a different material being hollow um, being a different diameter all sorts of different reasons okay um, so that's the first thing you've got the shaft of the arrow um, which obviously includes its mass its material its cross-section lots of things um, and then you've got the head of the arrow now what I'm holding here, if I just get the camera to focus on the head for a second, is a mass-produced so-called bodkin. Okay. Now I have shot at um, I have shot at bits of um, plate and targets and armour and various things with different types of arrowhead. Um, and if you talk to someone like Will Sherman, for example, who's very famous for making replica medieval arrows, he's even making them for the Mary Rose Museum and all sorts of scientific tests that are being done. You know, he's probably the leading medieval arrow maker for European style arrows at the moment in the world. Um, and coupled with as far as the heads are concerned, Hector Cole, but Will Sherman makes the entire arrows, the heads and the shafts. Um, you will, if you talk to an expert like that, or indeed if you talk to a much less of an expert like me, you will find that the nature of the arrowhead makes a vast, vast difference to the results you'll experience. Okay, so if you have uh, different types of head, they had many types of different types of arrowhead. I know that um, Todd, uh, um, has, on Todd's channel, has recently done a, a little talk about the different types of arrowheads. Well worth watching, checking that out. Um, but they had many different types of heads, not just in, in England, but they had lots of different types of arrowheads, obviously in Japan, in India, um, in parts of the Middle East, Syria. So everywhere you go, you find lots of different arrowheads. Now, when you have lots of different heads for a thing, there's a reason for that. It's not just for the hell of it. It's not just for fun. If one type of arrowhead did all things, then you'd only have one type of arrowhead. Now, for armour penetration of plates, so this is a brigandine that is not massively dissimilar, it is quite dissimilar, but it's not massively dissimilar to lamellar armour found in, in Asia. When you've got um, steel plates that you're penetrating, that is a very specific type of target and it's very very different to uh, hunting arrowheads or arrowheads designed to go through mail. So what a lot of people talk about are bodkin points, okay? So this is a sort of short bodkin. Um, Normal bodkins are longer, longer and pointier than this. Now they are primarily for penetrating either male or gambeson, and in other words padded armour, or a combination of the two, male and gambeson, which obviously you'd often get together anyway. Um, the types of arrowheads that do the best against plate are different types of arrowheads. What we also know is that um, circular or cylindrical arrowheads do really quite poorly against plate because they have too much surface area in contact with the plate when they're trying to penetrate. The best types of heads for penetrating plate have edges on them because the edges, if you imagine um, cutting a tin can open with a can opener, you're shearing the steel, shearing the metal of the tin to open up that can. And that seems to be the best type of um, arrowheads. T tend to be things like type 16s and um, what are known as plate cutter heads. Um, the type of arrowheads that have some sort of angles on, the, uh, on them, edges on them, uh, that actually shear away the plate. That's the first thing. The second thing is the material is very, very important. Now, various people experimenting with steel, good quality steel arrowheads, um, and other people are, people like Will Sherman, are making arrowheads out of what's the equivalent of mild steel, so low carbon steel, and then they're carburizing the surface. Um, you put, um, I think, antler and horn and things like that, and you leave it essentially soaking to soak up the carbon into the surface so that you're actually making a higher carbon surface, which is essentially case hardening or similar to case hardening. It's a related uh, sort of effect to case hardening. And uh, you can, if you put enough carbon into the surface of an otherwise mild steel arrowhead, you could then quench it and end up with a hard tip and a hard surface. Now, all of these things make a huge amount of difference when the thing hits the armor, okay? 
in that moment of impact that's where all the magic happens that's where the real that's the real thing we're looking for the bow the type of release all of this kind of stuff is irrelevant once the arrow's in the air once the arrow's in the air all you have is mass velocity and then the nature and construction and style of the arrow what the shafts made of how thick it is the cross section whether it's got taper on it whether it's barreled what style of arrowhead it's got and what the arrowhead's made of so to my mind where the way of archery's um, test fell down somewhat was in the in their choice of arrows and the arrowheads in particular their most effective arrowheads were similar to these now i've had these for many years and i use them on targets i wouldn't even bother to use these on an armor testing um, thing because these are crap okay they're the wrong cross section for good armor penetration and they're the wrong material they are rubbish steel um, and they're relatively soft okay now in the way of archery's test they used lamellar armor which was probably just about the absolute best quality lamellar armor that ever would have existed historically and they i think they know that and they can see that it is um, as far as i gathered it is hardened spring steel um, which most lamellar armor wasn't most lamellar armor was made of probably iron or mild steel and um, probably was not you know well if it was mild steel or iron it couldn't be heat treated even if it was higher carbon steel probably most of it wasn't heat treated not to say that some of it possibly wasn't heat treated because as we know whilst a lot of uh, sort of regular armor in the medieval period in Europe um, was the equivalent of mild steel these the plates in this brigandine um, are made of hardened spring steel okay and we know that that did exist we know they did do that and we know that the best quality armors breastplates even mail chain mail was sometimes hardened okay so you could get chainmail made of iron you could get chainmail made of the equivalent of mild steel low carbon steel um, higher carbon steel and even hardened um, high carbon steel so there was a vast array of qualities and obviously this will give very different results on the moment of impact when the arrow meets it so to summarize there are three important things in these tests the bow the arrow and the armor we can take the bow out because actually the bow is not that important the arrow the arrow doesn't get enough attention so please go and have a look at medieval arrows at will sherman's um, facebook page if you're on facebook um, and have a little look at how he's doing arrows based on historical surviving examples but also, very importantly, the arrowheads, the variety of arrowheads and the ways that they're made and the materials that they're made of. If we're going to get these tests giving us really historically robust results, we need to be getting the arrows right, the, the structure of the arrow shafts um, and the quality and type of the arrow heads. And lastly, remember that historically, we probably saw a wider wide array of different results of arrows hitting armour based on the type of arrow and quality of arrow. We know that in Henry V's time he made a big thing about employing an armourer at the Tower of London uh, and he actually gave edicts stating that arrows had to be made of hardened steel. So it was important to them. So the, um, we'll get very different historical results and modern results based on the arrows and based on the armor and remember the armor varies hugely and arrows vary very hugely in some ways historically probably armor varied more than the arrows did because the arrows were probably universally pretty good quality um, whereas the the armors could be varying qualities based on people's budgets because they bought their own for the most part they purchased their own armors there might be some exceptions to that but um, generally speaking you'll find everything in the medieval period in anywhere in the world from Europe right the way through the Middle East to Asia and down to Africa you will find everything ranging from obviously non-metallic armors but when we're talking about ferrous armors with everything from iron through mild steel to carbon steel to hardened carbon steel um, and that will give a huge uh, array of results anyway go and watch the way of archery's um, test it's absolutely awesome but do you know what guys I enjoyed it a lot, but as I say, the, I think the arrows let you down, and I'd love to see you do it again. I know this is expensive, I know these guys have a Patreon, um, so if you want to see this happen, they've clearly able to pull £100 
uh, in excess of 100 pound uh, draw weight bows and shoot them really well, really accurately, far more. They can pull far bigger poundages than I can and shoot much more accurately, accurately than I can. Um, so they've got the know-how, they've got access to the top quality armour. It would be interesting to see some mild steel as well as hardened steel, personally, because I think the majority of lamellar armour was probably iron or mild steel. Um, but that's easily done, that's easily achieved. They're doing everything right, but they were let down by the arrows. So let's get them some really good arrows. Maybe Will Sherman uh, could supply some historically accurate arrows to them, because I know he's making them right. Um, and I want to see more of this, because we love seeing it, and let's make it better and better and better, and then we can get more and more and more results, and the more data we have, the more scientific we can be. So let's throw some more science at this. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, I hope this has been thought-provoking. That's what I'm hoping for here. Also, don't take this as too much of a criticism, guys, um, at Way of Archery Channel, um, because uh, I really loved your video. I'm encouraging other people to go and watch it, but I think you can, I think you can go even better um, in the future with better arrows and, and maybe different types of armour of different qualities as well. I think that'd be really interesting. And if possible, a top quality armour compared to a, an uh, armour with iron plates. See if you get different results in those cases. I suspect you will. Uh, but I might be wrong. Who knows? I haven't done this and I'm always willing to accept that I'm wrong. But I do think that arrows are an incredibly important part of this equation. And unfortunately, arrows often get the least attention. People focus on the bow and the armour and they don't think about how important those arrows are. Um, thanks for watching. Um, please subscribe if you haven't done already. Give me a like and also give these guys a like. Link below. Uh, go and watch their video now and I'll see you guys again soon. Cheers folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers folks.